Oh, okay, so if you're into video games, you don't need me to tell you that God of War Ragnarok is fucking awesome. And if you're not into video games, you don't give a shit how awesome it is. But even having acknowledged how little this input is needed, and I'm still going to say it, God of War Ragnarok is fucking awesome. I I've been playing it for the last couple of weeks, and I'm having a blast with it. It's the latest in a game franchise that's been around for damn near 20 years now. Uh, which just made a lot of you suddenly aware of how old you are. Apologies for that. But it's the first one I've ever played, despite 17 years of good reviews. And to be honest, it's not really the kind of game I normally enjoy a lot, in that it's really narrative heavy. That, that means that you spend almost as much time watching your game as playing it. And normally that shit drives me nuts, right? I, I want to mash a button, skip the dialogue, and get back to ripping monsters in half with my flame knives or whatever. But the writing in this one, the voice acting, the way that the storytelling ties in with the gameplay really makes the cutscenes the highlight of the experience. And don't worry, I do remember what this show is about, and trust me, I'm getting there. Because this, this whole game franchise revolves around ancient mythology. It started off among the Greek pantheon, but eventually that sort of played itself out, and it, they moved the story into Norse mythology. Same main character, mind you. So, so you now play as a, a Spartan warrior navigating his way through Asgard and shit. And as you may have already surmised based on that description, the writers didn't really feel the need to stick to the historical interpretation of said mythology, right? They just use familiar characters and elements to craft a new story that gives you that novel but familiar feel that you get with like a, like a well-made prequel or reboot, right? And that really got me to thinking about what a shame it is that the most familiar of all the ancient world's mythologies is so inaccessible to modern storytellers. I mean, so, so what makes stories like the one in God of War work is that to some degree, you already know these characters. They have established personality traits and rivalries and betrayals that give them a depth that most stories, you know, have to devote a pretty big chunk of their time to setting up. Plus, in most fantasy stories, the writer has to tip their hand every time they introduce a new magical item or spell or something. But, you know, when you're drawing from an existing mythology, something like Thor's hammer or Loki's mask can just show up you know, mid-story, and, 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 and we know what we're dealing with, right? We're not surprised by them. In other words, the more aspects of the mythology the reader or player or viewer already knows, the more avenues it opens up to the storyteller, which means that the ideal mythology when it comes to storycraft in modern-day America, or pretty much anywhere that we have an audience, is Christianity. Now, obviously, using Christian mythology and stories isn't entirely taboo the way it might have been 100 years ago, Right? Horror movies often draw on Catholic mythology. Comedies borrow heavily from the ideas of heaven and angels a lot of times. Every third movie we watch on GAM is based on apocalypse mythology. But when a writer is using living mythology, for lack of a better term, they're constrained in ways that the people who made God of War Ragnarok just weren't. You know, like Even a, a, a movie as irreverent and wantonly blasphemous as Kevin Smith's Dogma still felt the need to like treat Christianity with a certain amount of reverence as Chris Rock's Jesus is just all right with me speech attests. But if we were freed from those shackles, imagine how many new stories we could sculpt out of the Bible's raw materials. I mean, obviously, the first thing I would want is a game where Kratos beats the fuck out of, like, the archangel Gabriel and swordmouth Jesus is a boss fight. But that's obviously just the tip of the storytelling iceberg, right? David and Goliath, Cain and Abel, Samson and Delilah, Adam and Eve. There are literally dozens of ready tropes ready for creative exploitation. Characters whose relationships we'd automatically understand and whose motivations we just automatically know. And not to mention cinematic backdrops like heaven, hell and purgatory. Because see, here's the thing. I know this is going to sound weird to people who aren't familiar with with how much more sophisticated video game narratives have gotten in the last 10 or 15 years. But God of War Ragnarok has some remarkably human moments, you know, moments of genuine pathos that hit all the harder because of the, you know, the second person nature of a video game. And when you think about it, it's really remarkable that the very same characters and fictional lands that were touching the hearts of like, 13th century Icelandic poets are also touching the hearts of modern day gamers in South Georgia. But the very reason they can be relevant is because they're not reverent. Right? They've got creative license to redeem, betray, or kill off any character they see fit to in service of the larger story. They're allowed to update it because nobody's going to get furious at them for not like treating Heimdall with his due respect. Or I guess almost nobody. The internet is a place where people go to complain about Batman stories that don't line up with canon. So I'm sure somebody's pissed about it. But try making a game where it turns out that Jesus was the bad guy the whole time, right? And compare the size of the protests. 
And, and I'm not normally one to tell Christians how to use their Bible, but they're fucking it up. The whole point of having mythology is so that it can act as a touchstone from generation to generation. But when you're inflexible with your stories, you rob them of that potential. For the modern reader, there's no ethical core to most of the Bible's stories. Right? There's no moral to be gleaned from Noah's Ark or Jephthah's daughter or Lot's wife. They're valuable in their preserved form in terms of like helping us understand what mattered to people thousands of years ago. But in depriving them of their modernity, you've also deprived them of their humanity. By imbuing them with divine meaning, you've robbed them of all practical meaning. And you've made it so that the living mythologies are the deadest ones of all. 